tonight's show is so jam-packed, I'm gonna have to take a big breath. <gasps> tonight on About Tonight, theatre maker Daniel Tobias, one third of Axis of Awesome, Lee Namo, writer-presenter Rachel Corbett, actor extraordinaire Toby Truslove, cake expert Z Scott, and house band The Twops, with your host, Susie Youssef. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to About Tonight, the weekly late night show on Channel 31 with a rotating host. <laughs> I am your host this evening. My name is Susie Yusuf. You may have seen me on the ABC on uh, Media Circus or at the Melbourne Comedy Festival doing um, hilarious comedy shows or maybe just in dumpling houses down Little Burke Street. Uh, tonight we have a massive lineup for you of guests. They are some wonderful people from my life and maybe from yours. Uh, we have Rachel Corbett, who is a writer, voiceover artist, TV and radio hottie. Uh, we also have handsome face and actor Toby Truslove. We have one third of the Axis of Awesome, uh, Lee Namo is his name. And we have the sweetest and sassiest business owner in Melbourne, Z Scott. It's going to be a huge night. But uh, before we get started, I just wanted to tell you about some interesting news that uh, was revealed this week. Um, historians have found the, a transcript for the shortest relationship in history, and I'd just like to replay that for you now. No, you hang up. <laughs> He did. <laughs> the Twox, ladies and gentlemen, our house band! <laughs> Hello, how are you going? Thank you so much for being on the show. I'm very well, very well. Just keen to, you know, kick this off. Just so pumped. Uh, you guys are very talented. Bit, bit better than I thought you'd be. So that's, um, you know, don't upstage me. Okay, so we're going to start with our first guest tonight. I'll tell you guys instead. Uh, our first guest tonight is a, a theatre maker, a musician, um, a comedian, a writer. There's not much he doesn't do. Um, he's a wonderful man, an all-round delight. Please welcome Daniel Tobias. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Oh, Whoa. I just sat on my battery pack. I've That's got a good a start. Microphone, <laughs> and it. There's and not a lot of room it. back there, and I was just yes, excited there is. to it's get massive. out. It's I was practically just, Narnia. Was, yeah, and I was like stuck in there, and I was yeah. like, I just had to stretch. Really, that's what that was. <laughs> Thing. Yeah. Oh, you just stretch. That's what the dancing was about. Yeah. I thought you were having a fit. <laughs> oh. No, it was good. They were good moves. They were great. Moves. <laughs> they were really great moves. How are you, Daniel Tobias? I'm excited that you're in Melbourne. Oh, I'm so excited to be in Melbourne. I'm um, I'm Sydney based. So f for those of you who don't know, which yeah. is everyone. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's great to be in Melbourne. I love Melbourne. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice to be here. And we did dumplings. We did dumplings. I can't. I can't stop. With the dumplings? Yeah. You can't stop eating With food them. in general. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. quite... Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's all out there. There's so much going on. Yeah. Um, Daniel, most people would know you from uh, your work with Die Rotten Punkte. Uh, you work alongside Otto and, and Astrid Rott. Yes. Uh, doing writing and, and, and bits and pieces with them. Carrying their things Carrying their well. things, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but uh, you've, um, you've added a string to your bow. I have. So to speak. I made a solo show. With just me on stage. Yeah, that's how uh, most. That's, how they, that's yeah. mostly how they work. Yeah, yeah. I'd never, <laughs> I'd never done that before. So, um, but uh, it's done now. So, I'd like, I don't have to say, come and see my show. Not yet, but it will be back. It, it'll be back. Um, so we did a season at the Malt House mm -hmm. for a couple of weeks. But uh, does this go to Canada? This show. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, if you're in uh, London, Ontario, they have a place called London in Canada. It's a crazy world. <laughs> it's the second biggest London in the world. That's incredible. And yeah. you're going there. I'm going there. Yep. And uh, to Montreal, mm -hmm. uh, to uh, Winnipeg, Toronto and Ottawa. Wow. And then to Edinburgh, which is not in Canada. No. But it could be. They pro actually, they probably have they probably have I bet one. they do. They used to have a Berlin. In Canada. Uh, what happened to it? Well, they had a. There was a war. Yeah, and a wall, and it fell. No, they. Well, they just thought we can't call it Berlin because that's a bit weird. Oh, okay. So they call it Kitchener now. Kitchener. Kitchener. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Well, that show that's going to all these wonderful places is called The Orchid and the Crow. Yeah, The Orchid and the Crow. So, can you explain what's the what's the title about? Um, the, the or well, okay, so about ten years ago, mm -hmm. I went through treatment for testicular cancer. 
I'm fine now. He's, no still, one, he's still here. I'm, he's still here. Spoiler alert, I yep. survive. <laughs> um, I don't have to worry about it anymore. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, Would you like some water? Yeah. Yeah, go for it. Hey, how's, it's got a, um, it's very uh, sophisticated here, isn't oh, it? Oh yeah, <laughs> we have two coasters actually, so mm. there's one over here as well. Um, so I just kind of, what kind of got me through all of that was uh, hearing other people's stories. Mm -hmm. And in particular Lance Armstrong's story, which sounds ridiculous now because he's but no, at the time, at the time, yeah. he was, you know, quite a. Anyway, so the story that I'm telling is when I was eight days old, my parents got me circumcised because they're Jewish atheists. Yeah, not just be, not yeah because they're Jewish. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, you can't. It's it's illegal to um, be circumcised for any other reason in Australia now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Since 2007, yeah, I only learned this. Thing. I've been getting up at 4.30 the last few nights. I don't know why something goes bing and it's like you need to either write something down or learn something. And once I've done that for half an hour, I can go back to sleep. So you're like a legislation about circumcision at 4.30 in the morning. That's what I did yeah, last same, night. I know, same. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, but since 2007, um, you, you cannot get uh, circumcised for cosmetic reasons as a baby mm -hmm. in Australia. Wow. Yeah. So. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> um, We're learning so much. I know. It's a very educational show, mine. Uh, so, so my parents get me circumcised, mm -hmm. and so I'm in God's gang. God's, I'm one of his chosen people. Yeah. Right? Because that's the, the covenant with God. That's the deal. That's the deal. Yeah. And so, um, but God doesn't like my uh, lifestyle choices. Okay. He's because not, you're an atheist, so uh, you don't even really believe that he's there. Yeah. yeah. Well, well you come that. from it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I go and I talk about to other people about circumcision, saying maybe it's not a great idea. Yep. Anyway, so uh, God decides to make an example of me by giving me testicular cancer. Wow. Yeah, I know it's pretty rough, but he, uh, so I'm lost in the spiritual wilderness of how to get through this treatment. And um, I get delivered the book of Lance Armstrong yeah. and he becomes this modern Messiah figure and helps me get through it. Wow. Yeah. So and it's a comedy and it's a musical. There's yeah. some big, big musical numbers. Yeah. There's like a, a, like a pretty crazy rock song and there's a, an opera I've heard. There is. There is an opera um, and it's co-written with a guy called Jarek Bischoff. Yeah. Who I met, who, he's, he was the bass player in Amanda Palmer's band. Oh, wow. And he just um, produced Missy Higgins' last album. And uh, he's got his own album. It's called Composed. And it's uh, all sort of orchestral pop and uh, David Byrne was a guest on it and a whole bunch of other people and uh, I just heard that and I just had this idea that I would like to have an opera in Italian where I'm singing goodbye to my right ball. And that's kind of, <laughs> yeah, kind of <laughs> like not? the way a, a mother would sing goodbye to their son going off to war yeah. that they may never see again. And so, yeah, it's kind of like that. That's brilliant. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here. Can you stick around for a little bit longer? I can. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Because we're going to throw to a break, but we're going to be back soon with one third of the Axis of Awesome and with Daniel Tobias and the Twox who are playing us out. Uh, we'll be right back. Welcome back to About Tonight. I'm your host, Susie Youssef. Uh, we've just been speaking to Daniel Tobias uh, about his solo show, The Orchid and the Crow. And you've hung around. Thank you, Daniel, for hanging around. I have around. moved uh, a seat away. You were a polite man. Yeah, I just thought, give the people space. Give, give the people space. Yeah, whoever, whoever might come out next. Yeah. And the person who is coming up next <laughs> is one third of the Axis of Awesome. He's a hilarious gentleman who has a new show at the Melbourne Comedy Festival. Please welcome Lene Mo. <laughs> 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 Hello, Lee Nemo. Hiya. Hi, Hi, how are you going? Uh, great, how good, how are you? Oh, so well. So happy to have you on the show. <laughs> hey, Is hey this man. Dan? Hi, Dan. Dan. Yeah, no, yeah, we know. We, yeah. 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 Great. We've, we've coordinated. Yeah, you're looking good. Oh, you both, you shaved your heads? Yeah. Yep. 
Awesome. Lee, Yours you work long, actually. Okay, so yeah, yeah. Okay, you go, Daniel. <laughs> yeah, it is, man. Yeah. <laughs> You tell me when you guys are ready. That's right. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm ready. Okay. Uh, Lee, usually you work with the Axis of Awesome, but uh, last year you wrote a solo show, uh, Lee Nemo in Finding Lee. Wrote. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Look, Lee. a lot of people are confused about the title because my last name's Nemo. Yep. So the show's called Lee Nemo in Finding Lee. Because you're hilarious. But, well, a lot of people don't get it, so yeah. I think to, to clear it up, I'm no, going to no, call... No, no, I think they get it. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, Okay. Because someone keeps writing on my Facebook page every time I promote the show. They're like, why isn't it called Lee Namo in Finding Namo? Ah, oh, that's the tone I project onto them. Yeah. So. <laughs> onto anyone who comments on your wall. Yeah. Oh, I think you're wonderful. Happy birthday! <laughs> oh. yeah. So usually you work with the Axis, so, which is a very collaborative effort with yeah. Benny Davis and Jordan Riscopoulos. How have you found the, um, the, the solo, the solo uh, path? If you will. Uh, oh, it's, it's great. I love it. No, it's it's very challenging yeah. um, because for years, we've been together for eight years and we, we write together, and uh, but we're very segmented as well. So Benny does a lot of the music for the band, whereas Jordan and I do more of the other stuff that we do, the comedy. And the, the comedy stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I've kind of had to learn how to do, because there's a lot of music in my show, I've had to learn how to kind of reteach myself how to write some music and production and... Yeah, and, and it's hard to write an idea and then go, you know, normally you turn to your writing partners and go, is this funny? And they'd either go, yeah, or So no. how, do you, how do you test stuff out now? Um, I shout it into a bucket <laughs> yeah. and then leave the room. Okay. And if I come back and if the bucket's still there, it's a good idea. That's <laughs> incredible. That's really helpful for anyone yeah. who's writing sort a show. Trick, sort of yeah. trick. It's yeah. probably a relief, though, because the bucket's a lot nicer to you than those it other boys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the bucket actually... Returns my calls. So. <laughs> uh, but I mean, you, you work with, with Claire in Derot and Puncta, so that, that's a similar thing, right? To then go from collaborative to solo stuff. Yeah, but we've been writing songs together on this and she's co-produced it as right. well, so yeah. You actually worked with heaps of people on your solo show. I did. Which less a solo show, maybe even more so than Diron Puncta. It's, it's, yeah, that's right. There's more. There's, pr there's not many people who didn't work on this show. But they're really. wonderful people, like David Quirk, Casey yeah. Bonetto. Yeah. It was Christian an incredible Leavesley. Christian yeah. Leavesley. Just such a great lineup and such a talented group of people. Yeah. Well, I, I just my idea is that if I'm going to make something, I'll just get lots of people in the room who are smarter than me. Yeah. And then if I, you know, and then take the credit for it when you're on exactly, stage. That's exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Same. That's what I do. That. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Let's <laughs> break my pen. <laughs> no big deal. It's all part of it. It's a prop. It doesn't even work. <laughs> yeah. Not at all. It's all. It's all props. <laughs> oh. Can you? you saved me. Thanks, Lee. No worries. So, Lee, not only are you uh, a very talented uh, solo artist now, um, but sure, you also... <laughs> 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 You've come in today to do um, one of my favourite of, favourites of your talents is parkour, which yeah. some people may not know about that, is that Lee Namo is, um, is a parkour expert. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've known each other for a number of years. Uh, and I'm still blown away by your parkour skills. Um, so if you want to, if you want to maybe just set up your parkour. Yeah, yeah, I'll just set, I mean, it needs a bit of a course A too. little bit there. So and know, while you're doing a, that. It's actually quite an ancient French. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, finish that thing? sentence. Yeah. I was, I didn't know how. Um, yeah. Can you write the end of that sentence for me? Because uh, often parkour is, is jumping around on things that are already in a spot like yeah because i noticed you've done a bit of setting up here <laughs> yeah well i've like um, normally i'll do parkour on the street oh or, i see or, you yeah. know, you're so a street parkour artist I'm, this is a yeah. simulated street imagine oh, okay. these are like stools on a street <laughs> yeah i get it because often you see three round stools like yeah. that just sitting in the street all right buddy all right, <laughs> <laughs> okay. just all right. let me do my shitty parkour <laughs> and we'll, uh... so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna introduce you so uh this is um this is lee namo uh you know from from the streets of paris to um to melbourne and geelong uh, for your viewing pleasure this is lee namo doing parkour <laughs> Oh my gosh, yeah. that was so worth it. That was yeah. just so nice. incredibly That's worth it. Thank television. you so much. That's Another television. round of applause for Lee Namo. Yeah. That was <laughs> oh, actually, um, do you mind if I, I know there's some great music here, but I actually brought along, I'm a, I'm a musician as well. I have a few different skills, so I thought I might play a bit of bassoon to uh, okay. finish um, out the... Just, just, yeah. 
That's great. Awesome. Just before you do that, Lee, just for anyone who wants to see you uh, at the Melbourne Comedy Festival, um, where, uh, can you give us the details of your show? Sure, sure. So I'm at the Butterfly Club uh, on Carson Place in the city. Uh, Fridays and Saturday nights, 10.30 p.m. Check it, just Google like Lee name. I'm finding Lee. You know how to use the internet, I assume, so. Amazing. <laughs> Oh, and we've just run out of time for the bassoon, which is such a shame. <laughs> but after the break, we will be hearing from Rachel Corbett, uh, Toby Truslove and Z Scott. So please stick around and we will um, we'll be back shortly. Welcome back to About Tonight. I am your host, Susie. So please give it up for the Twocks. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Dan Tobias and Lee Nemo, you've uh, hung around, still here. Um, maybe you asked us to leave, <laughs> we stayed. Uh, they never do what I say, which is fine, which is great. Um, I'm so sorry about the bassoon. I really, um, I really wanted that to happen, but just so restricted with time. Um, yeah, sorry. Come and see it. I played in my solo show, so come and see that. Wonderful, and... which is Finding Lee. Yep. Yep, that's it, that's it, wonderful. <laughs> we have so many guests to get through, so I'm gonna jump straight to it. I'm gonna jump to it. I'm gonna say that as well. Um, our first guest is a, a wonderful lady, a TV and radio personality, a writer, and a voiceover artist. Please welcome to About Tonight, Rachel Corbett. Ooh. Well, hi. <laughs> hi. Hi. Hi, Rachel Corbett. Hi, lovely to be here. Cool. You are very good. They are very good. Very good. A little too good. <laughs> Turn it down. <laughs> okay. These seats are low. Really low. Like, I think my bottom is on the ground right now. That's what it feels like. But it doesn't look like that, right? Do I look okay? Does this look okay? Sure. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're lying to me. <laughs> I missed the dress like Moby thing. Uh, do not these kids look like Moby? They do look a bit like Moby. They do Mo look a bit like Moby. <laughs> do you know these kids? Dan, I do know. Dan, yes, Lee. Yes, yeah, I wonderful. do know these kids. I wouldn't issue a mild <laughs> insult to people I didn't know. We could, yes, only, we could make you insulting. look like Moby if you want to do that. You could, you could, but I'd prefer you not to. Yeah. You know, it's taken me a really long time to get my hair long again after I, you would have known me yeah, when you I had, had very short hair. Short hair. Ooh, yeah. What a mistake. Yeah. Massive. Oh no, I think it looks great. Huge mistake. You would say that to me because we're friends. Yeah. It was a huge mistake. It's pretty obvious now that I've just invited friends on the show, but um, <laughs> I think that's great. I don't get to come to Melbourne very often, and this is the best way I could catch up with everyone. So <laughs> thanks, Channel 31. <laughs> so Rachel, yes. uh, you, um, you, you write a blog. You write a blog called The Allergy Kid, I which do. is hilarious and informative. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and you're also doing uh, the Paul and Rach podcast. You guys have been doing that for a while now. Yeah, we're, well, Paul, Murray, and I used to do a radio show on Triple M for a couple of years together. Yep. And then he went and did the AM thing, sort of put the AM uh, radio, and he also does a show on Sky News. Um, so he got a little too serious for me. So a little no busy. Long, a little, yeah, a little busy. A little busy. He didn't answer my calls anymore. Uh, but then we kind of, and then I did a couple of shows in between then. So we decided when we were, I was unemployed, hey, I've got time to podcast. So yeah. now we do a weekly podcast, which is great. It's, you know, you, you don't have a program direct, director walking in and telling you, you know, that wasn't funny when you've never heard him be funny in your in, in his <laughs> entire life. And then, yeah, the Allergy Kid blog is just a, a little uh, writing thing about, because I'm gluten and dairy intolerant, which is also <laughs> <Fun>. annoying. <laughs> and uh, so I just was sick of reading those people who were writing things like, oh, it's so, you know, it's such a spiritual journey when you finally find kale. It's like, no, it's not. It's ridiculous, you know. So I just decided to write a bit about that. That's kind of trying to be informative, but at the same time, I'd be realistic. So nice. Yeah. And kale, kale's kind of like, kale's been big for a while. Kale but, is um, a joke, is what kale is. Yeah, it's expensive too. It's, it's really expensive. expensive. Yeah. And have you ever tried those kale chips no. where you put them? Have you guys tried I have kale an exclusive chips? dumpling yes. yeah. diet, so. It, once. It's a dessert, you, because you would never try them again? Yeah. Worst thing ever, no structural integrity to the snack. Like mm. you put it in your mouth. Which and is what you look for in a snack. If there's no structural integrity. How can I you mean, chew? Yeah. You can't, you put it in I your mouth, it turns to dust. Next thing you know, you've got to wash yeah. your clothes. Yeah. Yeah. In your <laughs> research. <laughs> yeah, rub it in Lee, I can't <laughs> eat any of those. I'm, I'm just wondering, is, is kale a cruciferous vegetable? Yes, it is. Well, that makes it hard to digest. Exactly, which is what, what, what my major problem with it has been. When I eat yeah. kale, I get I get clogged up. So 
Lose the kale, I'd yeah, say. Yeah, lose the kale. Yeah, it's yeah. a disaster on all fronts. Yeah. I'm so glad that we're speaking about your bowel movements already. Do you know, though, <laughs> that I'm pretty sure that, Dan, you learnt about the fact that kale is a cruciferous vegetable. Is that how you say it? And cruciferous. At cruciferous at 4.30 yeah. in the morning. Was that one of the things? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it was down, it was circumcision and then Circumcision, kale. then yeah. kale. Yeah. 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 yeah, the natural progression yeah. of Google, yeah. the, that YouTube uh, rabbit hole. It's just Wonderful. going alphabetically through the internet. Yeah, just <laughs> through the internet. Avoid D, avoid D. <laughs> well, we've got another the special guest with us today and I thought I would just bring him on so we can all just hang out. Do Why it. not? Uh, speaking of, of um, bowel movements and circumcisions, <laughs> please welcome to the stage Australian actor and all-round handsome face, Toby Trussler. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. 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 This is the game. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, oh, that was I know. When Lee just, he just held it out. You know what to do. You know what to do, buddy. The most charming man in show business. Lee or me? No, That's Lee. Bizarre. Obviously, yeah. Lee. Yeah. Obviously yeah. Shut Lee. up, Dickhead. <laughs> Toby Charming Trussell, welcome again. to the show. How are you Thank going? Thank you. Good, says USF. Yeah. You're a, bit, uh, you're a bit golden today. I'm golden. Yeah. That yeah. was for a play. I had my hair blonded for a play, and then it's still. They blonded it all, and then it's grown out. And it's still, now I look like a, like an 80s rapist. <laughs> <laughs> like a disco rapist. I, that's a sp very specific era. But no one wants me to take it out. Every show that I've done, I've done a few shows since then, and the, everyone's gone, it's kind of working. I'm like, really? It does kind of work. It does. It does I don't, work. yeah. It See, I look at myself and go, who are you? It doesn't look like you've died it. It looks like you've been in the Italian sun right. for a bit. Do you not yeah. think? On the in that case, I changed exactly. my story. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've been in the Italian sun, Susie. Oh, gosh. Thanks for noticing. What a wonderful uh, effect it's had on your hair. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I know. So what was the play that you were doing? Uh, it was called The Speechmaker, MDC show. Beautiful. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then it kind of, they kept, they, the look was like a, was like an asshole American guy. Just, and they wanted me to look like an asshole American and they're blonding my hair was the way to go. Or that was like in a thousand seat theatre, so there's no one can tell. Like only afterwards when friends would come, they go, did you do something to your hair? You're like, yeah, the point was that you would see it from the audience, but no one can. No, no. one can tell if your hair's a different colour. And next week, uh, next week, you, um, do you have to get rid of the blonde because you've got another project coming up next week with the ABC? Utopia. Utopia. Yeah, Utopia. season two starts. Which is exciting. They've seen it. This is the thing. They've seen it and they saw the, they, they've seen the beard and the hair and they like every time the people just go, yeah, no, good. I think this because cast and the character I play is again a bit of a an asshole. Can I say that? Well, Are we allowed funny. to say I that? I think you're I allowed to say whatever you want. You've already yeah. said 80s uh, rapist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's going to get much worse than that. Asshole rape. <laughs> oh wait, that's two things. Um, we're swimming in the murky waters already. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just Nobody's check and see if that's floaties. okay. Ignore this. <laughs> no, they're going to cut it. Okay. okay. No problem. Okay. Okay. No. But, but we were speaking earlier about um, you know behind the scenes of, of theatre and radio and television, mm -hmm. and there is you know there's a lot of makeup that goes on. Uh. I don't wake up like this. <laughs> um, <laughs> behind the scenes of anything, I, I know you've done a lot of theatre. I haven't done much theatre, but at, at least on telly, uh, you know you really don't want to see how the sausage is made. I find. And no. I, I, Unless it's a cooking show. Then <laughs> Unless it's a good show, about then you do. Making, then you probably and just some of the things that go on. I think if people kind of, you know, saw how things worked, mm. they would be the other. The real place that it happens is I worked a lot in regional radio when I started my career. Some of the stuff that goes on there, the number of times that I have been at sort of super cheap auto or tile mart or something on a trestle table doing a show where one, the manager comes out and gives you the tile discounts for the day and you have to read them out on air and that is your show. That's like, it's you. It's like a paid sales show. That what you a get dream. To, <laughs> what a dream. Why did you So leave? how did you get this yeah. job? Just, you really are living the dream in that yeah. situation. And you've got to do it with a smile on your face and a oh, bit of enthusiasm yeah. for a tile, which can yeah. be hard to muster. It's it really, really hard to put in. Do you mean like in those shopping stuff? centers where people are reading, like they're, they're going, yeah. and we've got this, like that kind of stuff? It's exactly that, except right. they're trying promo, to pass like a it off for entertainment. Right. <laughs> they're trying to call it a show. Right. And then do you try to link it into to song, so is it like, uh, and next up we've got dancing on the ceiling. I hope it's tiled. <laughs> <with these. laughs> it's like that kind Why of were you not there to write these things for me? Because it wasn't. I haven't quite made it across to regional radio yet. It was. Yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed <laughs> with that kind of dream. Do you when you're doing theatre? Do they do they heavily make you up? No, not no. anymore. This you can see there's a generation gap generally between the older theatre actors who tend to be a lot more like this, hours of makeup, and people put dots in the corners of the eyes to make the eyes look bigger. And mm -hmm. then there's an age group of like, 
who the hell can see if I've got makeup on? Yeah. Unless you're, you know, you have to have some sort of prosthetic. Yeah. Mm. Otherwise, no, no, I don't. Put <laughs> some it sort of prosthetic. Some sort of prosthetic. <laughs> have you, have you ever had? Oh, Sarah, no. Have you ever had a prosthetic? No, no, no. I've had. Just disguising things, cock sock. I had a, I jump in Laid in the first ah. series of Laid and second series. I had my, I had, I was, t- I was peeing this out. I had a cock sock, which was unattractive. Yeah, that's one of those things behind the scene you don't want to know about either, yeah. because they the cock sock looks like a, it looks like a little, it's like a little sock, big sock, whatever. So. <laughs> <laughs> but with like a little ribbon on it, it makes your penis look like a present. With a little ribbon, ribbon on yeah, it. like a room to tie it up. It looks, it looks like a gift. It looks worse oh, than actually it's having. A gift it is, is it just Toby. a sock to? Covered, so no yeah, one so it. no one sees that actual bit. So it actually fits. So the not girls the first have. Time for you. Girls have a. No, I've been nude on stage before. Yeah. I have been completely nude on stage before. Yeah, but yeah. been nude on Channel Thirty One. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laying out um, to you, Lena. <laughs> what about you, Dan and Lee? Do you ever put makeup on before? Well, I know that friends of yours do. Daniel. Yes, friends um, of mine in, do. But in your most recent show, uh, do you wear makeup? There's no makeup, and um, I don't have a prosthetic. Uh, Ball in that show either. No. So, oh, yeah. okay. I do though in my show. I have <laughs> yeah. Seven different size prosthetic balls. So. <laughs> it's a long show. How do you how do you decide between the seven? Uh, just depending just on the shout into a bucket. <laughs> 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 yeah, wonderful. Okay. Um, well, I mean, I don't want to cut the ball discussion or the um or the present cock discussion short by oh, any means. Okay. Um, but we do have a very exciting guest coming up um, who might have some. You can't eat any of what she's going to do. I'm aware. I've I don't think Daniel can either. I've seen backstage no. a bag full of treats, none of which I can come yeah. anywhere near. Which I think it was a bit of a dig at me, but we can talk about that later. I'm sure it wasn't. I'm <laughs> sure that I'm sure that your host uh, was very considerate in um, in the casting of this show. Uh, but you know, I'm sorry, I'll Rachel. It it's, it's, not, it's not my no guts. It's, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what to do about it. I don't know what to do. Um, yeah, so I reckon we're going to, uh, to to take a little break, but when we come back, thank you so thank all of our guests who have been on today so far: Toby Truslove, Rachel Corbett, Daniel Ooh. Tobias, and Lee Nemo. Thank you. Thank you. And the clocks are going to play us out to the break, but when we come back, the sassiest businesswoman and the sweetest businesswoman in Melbourne, we will have Z Scott with a melting ice cream cake. Stick around. <laughs> They're so beautiful. Welcome back to About Tonight. That was the Twox. They've been our house band tonight and they've been absolutely beautiful. Some would say a little too good for a show hosted by someone who may or may not know what they're doing. (laughs) But someone who does know what they're doing is the sassiest lady and the sweetest business uh, owner in Melbourne. Uh, Please make very welcome to About Tonight, Z Scott. Way too kind. Way too kind to me. Hello. <laughs> Hello. I'm so excited you're doing How this. How are you doing? I'm very well. Excellent. See, you um you own a business called Cake Day. Yep. It's Cake Day AU. Cake yeah. Day AU. Just, for, just in case I head back to the UK at any time, which case I can go back to Cake Day UK. Which is where you started. That's where I started. Yeah. And yeah. how long ago uh, did you start Cake Day UK? 2007, wow. and then I moved to Melbourne in 2011, and um, yeah, just been doing it ever since. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. And you make the most spectacular cakes today. Not only are you uh, making a cake, but you are performing an illusion. Uh, yeah. That's what you told me, so back me up. Okay, okay yes, that's yes, that's yeah, what yeah. I do. It's going to be magnificent. Yeah. David Blaine, be... step aside. Step aside. <laughs> <laughs> and look, we've got, we've got aprons on. I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, I, I think you I'd have upstaged me slightly. Yeah, just only a little bit. But, just a little bit. Know. As usual. <laughs> <laughs> Z. Okay, so we're just going to kick this off now. Tell us what we're doing. Okay, so what we've done is I've just got three layers of uh, lovely sponge cake that I made at sort of about midnight. Uh, today, so as you can see, probably by my face, I've been up for a long time. <laughs> if that's what so, you look like with no sleep, I'd hate to see you with makeup. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what I'm doing first of all is just layering up some. Uh, it's just vanilla frosting that I've made fancy and pink. Yep. Um, and this is a lovely utensil that I have in my collection. Um, yeah, I've got one of those. It's the. Flood, floody iron thing. It's a thing. Yep. I don't know. I make up names sometimes. It's the best way to go. Yep. Uh, so <laughs> what I'm doing is just getting the ice around the cake. So what we're going to do is we're just piling up some icing mm-hmm. on the cake to make it look nice and smooth. And then we're going to 
do a little bit of design and make it look like it's a fake ice cream melting. Oh, how exciting is that? So it's no no real no real ice cream, I'm afraid. Uh, ah, so this is the fake melting ice cream cake. Fake this is a signature. This is a signature cake in your collection. It is a signature cake in the collection, and everyone sort of loves this rustic look, which is great for me because, as you can see, I'm just going a bit wild here. Yeah, rustic is really big in uh, in cake decorating now. Like the the na is it the naked the wedding naked cake? cake yeah. The naked cake. The naked cake. Everyone loves the I naked cake. I think that's cake. starring Toby Truslow uh, at MTC <laughs> next season, which is exciting. <laughs> Very exciting. <laughs> Not the naked. <laughs> no one likes a naked Sorry. cake baker though, that's what I found <laughs> <No>. out. <laughs> okay, so what we've done, we've just made it nice and rough and rustic and I'm going to be quite happy with that. Yeah, it's amazing. Right? Okay. And then next up? So next up I've made uh, just a little ball of uh, Rice Krispies and marshmallows. Lots of people probably made these as kids and I never did because my mum was way too fancy for that. <laughs> Way too fancy. Way too fancy. She would have said, oh, what are you doing with this mess? You need to make like, I don't know, a pan au chocolat. <laughs> so you're a rebel. That's so you're, kind not, of you're how an she illusionist, uh, a cake maker and a rebel. And a rebel, yep. exactly. Now in this gravy boat is some chocolate ganache that I made this morning. So oh what I'm going to do is just... Rachel Corbett, avert your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> nice and messy. So this is the melting ice cream bit. You'll, it'll make sense in a little while. Oh, it's it's making perfect. This is singing to me right now. <laughs> so just drizzle it all on. This is where you can get really messy. It's a fun thing to do with the kids because you can get as messy as you want. <laughs> if you've got them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everyone's favourite, the old hundreds and thousands from the old fairy bread, which I only found about when I uh, moved here to Australia. Oh, Never heard have, before in my life. Don't have fairy bread in the UK. No, no? we kind of just have bread with butter and <laughs> some fillings. We just have clouds. Sweet stuff. <laughs> That's it. I'm just going to sprinkle so some good. of that on there. Do you want me to sprinkle some of it? You should sprinkle right. some as well. <laughs> totally sprinkle some. Okay. Get That's it. it. I'm getting scared. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. And then just to finish it up, we're just going to pop this on here. Oh my gosh. And it and it just looks like someone's made a really big mess, which is me. <laughs> She's amazing. Please give it up for Z Scott. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. Uh, you're a magician. Uh, that's basically what I am. That's basically what I do for the kids' parties on, on the weekends, um, yeah. just to make the extra funds for the cake making. Well, we can't keep you much longer because you are the busiest woman in Melbourne making yep. cakes seven days a week. Yep. And uh, when she's not making cakes, she's tearing up dance floors. Um, well, she's the second best dancer in Melbourne. First. She's the second best dancer First. in Melbourne. OK, we'll fight about it later. But uh, please give it up for Z Scott. Thank you so much for coming. You're absolutely incredible. If you want to know more about Z's cakes, you should head to the website. Uh, that, little, that little tune underneath was just uh, to get you excited about the twocks who are coming up next. Uh, but we'll be back. And then it's our last segment. Aww. Uh. It's all right. <laughs> Welcome back to About Tonight. I'm your host, Susie Youssef. But we've almost run out of time. Uh, thank you so much for joining us here on Channel 31. Uh, to all the, uh, all the crew, you amazing people. Just so amazing. Um, <laughs> I, I have with me, though, um, I have with me the host for next week's show, Anthony McCormack. Please give it up. Yeah. yeah. Hello, Anthony. Susie, it's been an incredible show. I oh, feel sorry for whoever is on next week. <laughs> you know what I mean. But that's you. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Who have you got coming on next week, Anthony McCormack? Oh, we've got uh, Gabrielle Gatte, the original Master Chef. Yes, His nice. Kitchen Rules. And uh, we, uh, Geraldine Quinn. Uh, as well as some other special surprise guests. Oh, how exciting is that? And um, hello, Lee Neymar. Hi. I know you want to close the show with some music, so. <laughs> and that's why we have the Twox. Please give it up for our house band who have been here all night doing amazing things. Hello, Twox. Hello. Uh, Zanny and Mark, you've been uh, such a pleasure to have on the show. Um, you've really brought up the, uh, the cultural element of the show while the rest has been wonderful, amazing. Thank you to my guests who have been on tonight. They have been Daniel Tobias, Lee Nemo, Rachel Corbett, Toby Truslove and Z Scott. Uh, if you want to know any more about those people, uh, put their names into Facebook and to the Google machine and they will tell you more. Um, but you guys have got some stuff coming up. You've got uh, an April Fool's Day show. Yes, yep, at Bennett's Lane in the city. Awesome. So, um, April Fool's, we will be there. 
But will you? <laughs> yes, we will. Okay, cool. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> and then, Zanny, you've, you're doing an exciting project uh, with MTC. Tell us about that. Yeah, um, I'm playing some music in um, What Rhymes With Cars And Girls, and mm. the it's based on the album by Tim Rogers. So I'm up on stage with Tim and an amazing bass player, Ben Franz, as well. So That's awesome. It's very cool to very go to work cool. at the Arts Centre. <laughs> yeah. And Mark's not doing that? No. 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 Okay. <laughs> But you were invited here tonight, so that's um, a plus for you. Yeah, that's, that was great. Yeah, Lee Namo, um, are you going to stick around till the till the end of the show? Yes. <laughs> what a what a lucky treat for all of us, for all of us here at about tonight. No, thank you so much, Lee, for being here. Really appreciate it. Um, and does your bassoon have a name? No. Nah. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm really glad that that's what the question that I chose for yeah, this moment. Yeah. yeah, Anthony McCormack, I'm so excited. No, Lee, you were going to say something. I don't want to cut oh, you off. Please move on. No. I've ruined enough of your show. <laughs> no, you haven't. Maybe just um, get the bucket and have a, a name yeah, jamming chat or something like that. That'd be great. Um, <laughs> wonderful. If you want to see more of Lee Nemo, you should see Finding Lee at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival, which starts in a couple of weeks. Um, you might want to see Susie Yusuf doing Our Lies on You at, the, uh, at ACME at the Games Room at 8.15 every night. Um, maybe bring 700 of your closest friends. That would be amazing. Uh, and Anthony McCormack, good luck next week. Thank it's going to be so much, much fun. I feel sorry for people who watch you this week say, this is fantastic, yeah. and then tune in next week. Oh. I feel no. sorry for people who watch me this week as well. So that's, <laughs> that's where we're the same. It's yeah. the opposite. This yeah. is a fantastic show. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, love fest. OK, <laughs> wonderful. We've done it. All right, that is the end of the show. But to play us out, we have First Light by the Twelks. Thank you so much for watching, and you'll see Anthony McCormack next week. Bye.